Welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to spend with us on WTMJ today. We are, we're going to talk about crime law enforcement. I love, I said this to the guys when they came in. I love when we take action plans and we actually do something about them. And, and on the issue of crime, heck, if you watch a TV commercial, you're hearing about it every day. And uh, we'll see if the candidates are going to follow through. But joining us in studio from Washington County, County Executive Josh Showman, welcome. Thank you. And Sheriff Marty Schulteis. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad you guys came in. So let's talk about this. You, you have presented, basically, it's called the Washington County Anti-Crime Plan Executive Summary is what I'm reading. So I asked you first, Josh, why now? Why is this important? Well, it's been something we've been talking about for almost five years, and uh, what really was the gut punch to me was when we had uh, what we thought was an active shooter situation at Slinger Middle School. You know, Sheriff and I have been talking about this on and off. We we have lunch every uh, month, and when that happened, uh, I I really thought to myself, you know, something I can't stand here in front of a mom or families ever again and think I could have done something and I didn't do it. And so that's really what we've been talking about for five years about it. It was what was like, we can't talk anymore. We got to do. And so we felt like, you know, it's, it's a big ask $3.6 million, 30 and a half positions. Um, That's different than what the most conservative county in the state normally does. So let's go to the constituents and say, here's our, here's our ask. We're going to do something. Do you want to fund it or don't you? And Sheriff, we know I've talked to many local leaders on this show over the last few years. Uh, the budgets get tighter. It's harder and harder to do your job. And oh, by the way, and as, as I read your report, crime is also increasing with the same amount of dollars to try to combat that, that, that issue. Yeah, public safety is no different than the, the average family. Costs increase in every single area. And uh, uh, what I really don't want to, to be in the position of is where I have to sacrifice the service to the citizens of, of Washington County. And uh, this particular crime plan was really had two major um, uh, forces behind it. Uh, number one, we, we looked at the, the minimum manpower that we should have working both in the jail and on the road. And uh, um, then we also looked at those crime trends that you were talking about. And after evaluating both of those, um, th- that's the, the number that we came up with is uh, that we thought was, was adequate. The, the minimum staffing, um, uh, I like that the community believes that we have, you know, hundreds of officers patrolling the streets. The the harsh reality is that our, our staffing levels have not changed. Our minimum staffing levels on the road since the mid uh, to late 1980s. And oh, by the way, your population doubled in that time. <laughs> Correct. And the housing, uh, yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, the, the community has certainly changed uh, for the good. Um, but with that growth, uh, uh, we're, we're a conservative county. I appreciate that. Uh, we try to do do more with, with less. Um, but we really just have not kept up with the, the growth of uh, an urban you know, metro area of the state. As I was reading through the plan, I see the, the key areas of the key issues, patrol staffing, mental health and crisis response, drug crimes and overdoses. And we could do an hour on that, that challenges in that environment. Schools, as, as the county executive mentioned, um, it's a big ask. And I'm going to ask you, county executive, a lot of common reaction. I hear it on the show. You're going to raise my taxes. Right. Yeah. The knee jerk reaction is referendum. Uh, we, we hate that word. Um, but you know, 30 to 60 seconds of explanation, as the sheriff just mentioned, we haven't changed our staffing minimums on patrol since the 1980s. And all of a sudden people go, are you kidding me? Um, you know, there's back the badges signs everywhere in Washington County and thin blue line flags flying. And I think when, when they hear that reality, uh, all of a sudden everything changes. And, you know, the good thing with, with this referendum for us is property values are are skyrocketing right now, 13.3%. Uh, increase in assessed value in Washington County this year. That's the highest since the 1980s. So the good news for us is even if this referendum passes, the tax rate is going to drop nine cents per thousand. Uh, if it fails, it's going to drop 27 cents That's per good thousand. That's budget man- management. It, it is. It is. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, we still get a little hectic about tax rates uh, in local government. It's the only level of government where if we told you your tax rate's going down, you'd still complain about it. Right. Uh, but, um, but, you know, it's it's constituents money not ours and i tell my staff that all the time we talk about that uh, as department heads elected or not all the time uh, and that's why i felt referendums the path to go so sheriff let's talk specifics so let's talk about drugs because obviously the fentanyl issue is huge i know that law enforcement deals with that 
on an ever increasing basis. Give me some specifics. What would this money pay for in the areas that we talked about? Sure. So in the, the drug area, so um, we're no different than every community within in Wisconsin and, and actually the nation. The the overdose exp- deaths that we've been experiencing have, have gone up dramatically. Uh, just to give a, a real brief um in 2019, we had 12 overdose deaths, which is too many. Uh, but this year, we're double that um, already. Is that trend being seen everywhere in Wisconsin, do you think? I believe if you talk to any law enforcement agency, um, specifically fentanyl um, and the opioid, is is certainly um, a, a, a contributing factor to a majority of, the de- of overdose deaths. In our, in our case, 88% of them involve fentanyl. And it's a it's a trend that we need to address. There's a risk to officers in in this as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So all our officers carry Narcan, and you usually use that to administer to uh, an individual that is overdosing. Um, but there have been cases, thankfully not uh, with our agency, where the the fentanyl dust uh, can cause an overdose for the the officer, the first responders that are on scene. So it's it has been uh, utilized for first responders to to uh, stop the overdose. Somebody might say, "Well, you're doing the job now with the money you currently are getting. Why should we change?" that you, you're making the case that we could do a lot more we can be better at you know solving crime better at preventing crime better at slowing down this this ever-increasing drug problem is that the answer so um, what I would say is that um, um, cops are very good at investigating crimes and, and trying to make victims whole um, what what we have seen with uh, that minimum staffing level that we've been utilizing is we become much more reactive and we're very good at it um, but the whole premise of policing is to prevent and deter prevention and deterrence and uh, when the officers are just running from call to call they're not able to do that proactive part of law enforcement where we try to to uh, to stop the problems before they begin and that's really the whole essence behind uh, increasing our staffing and Josh again from the budget perspective I, I know these are tough sales because I've had mayors and, and city leaders countless times in studio um, there's always that pushback there's always say you're spending my money I'm gonna I want to be very careful are we seeing this trend of referendums we've seen it with schools and to be honest a lot of them very successful I know a few local leaders, mayors that have tried the referendums for public safety haven't got there. What makes this one different? Well, I think specifically that it's personnel only in the sheriff's office is helpful, number one. Uh, certainly, referendum, the R words, is, is a scary thing. Um, but I think you're starting to see all across the state of Wisconsin, you know, here in the city of Milwaukee, 17 more police officers uh, proposed to be eliminated in the budget. Uh, the sheriff's office, even in Waukesha County, they're struggling with their, with their budget uh, issues at the same time, uh, just like every other industry, the personnel costs uh, are are skyrocketing. Winnebago and Waukesha County alone gave their officers, uh, their deputies, three dollars an hour across the board increases. I mean that puts pressure on everybody. Not to mention the the morale and the climate of law enforcement. It's just, it's just brutally tough. And I think people uh, appreciate that and recognize that. Um, you know the thing with us in Washington County is. I've been with the county for nine years, first as county administrator, now as elected county executive, and we've reduced the size of county government everywhere you can think. Uh, the tax rate's the lowest it's been since World War One. Uh, believe it or not, the tax levy. Uh, Do you think the public collect. understands that? Because I've, I've, I've no, I know that that's true, but they, I don't think they realize that. They, they really don't. I mean, it, and you know, it's 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 been good things. You know, Governor Doyle started tax levy limits in two thousand five. Governor Walker continued them and tightened them, and Governor Evers has continued them past those two. So this isn't a partisan thing. This is I, people have said loudly and clearly, we've had enough with property taxes. Do something different. Well, we've been really cranking the screws to smaller government. Eight percent of our staff overall has been reduced since I've got to the county. Number of buildings, number of acres, basically every metric you can think of, we've reduced. But our highest priority in county governance is a safe and secure community. It's constitutional, right? Uh, that safety is is what government exists for. If we can't do this, boy, oh boy, I, we got some problems. So I think this is what makes us stop and say, go to the constituency. Hey, we want to do this really well. Do you want us to do it or don't you? And, and I think that's a really good conversation for Washington County citizens to have. We're talking with Washington County Executive, uh, County Executive Josh Shulman and Sheriff Marty Schulteis. So take a break. Uh, Sheriff, think about this one. Mental health is a big part of this equation. What people are dealing with personally often impacts what the public has to accept or not accept when it comes to crime, how they interact, and how law enforcement comes into that equation. We'll ask you that question after the break right here on WTMJ. 
We are joined in studio by Washington County Executive Josh Showman and Sheriff Marty Schulteis. Sheriff, I asked the questions before the break, so let's get to it. One of the pieces of this anti-crime plan and referendum is mental health. Anybody who looks at crime, anybody who talks about crime, we know this is a big part of it. So explain that connection and what you're trying to do with this piece of this plan. Sure. So the, the mental health affects every aspect of the criminal justice system. In fact, well beyond that, the, the, the health care system, the school systems. Um, so one of the, uh, the proposals that we have in this referendum is to have a co-response team. And that's basically a, a higher level trained deputy paired up with a clinical social worker. Um, they would respond to calls out in the, the, the county as a more of a, a reactive approach where they try to de-escalate uh, any calls that involve mental health issues. But more importantly to me is is that proactive approach that I mentioned before. What that is designed to do is um, every mental health uh, county system has known clients that they know just struggle. And what we don't want to do is the, we don't want to see them get into that crisis mode. So the proactive approach of this is be ma- trying to make more of a uh, the, the daily check-ins to check on how they're doing, their status, if there's anything bothering them, that we can alleviate them from getting into that crisis mode where law enforcement has to respond, where we have to bring those people into the healthcare system, get medically cleared, into the criminal justice system. Um, so that's a very, very important aspect of it. The other aspect is in our jail. Um, um, that is probably between that that and drug uh, addiction are by far the two biggest concerns in our jail. Um, are and that's a safety issue too, just for the the health and safety of the people that are inmates, but also the people that are serving them. Yes, a- absolutely. Um, every day um, we have uh, uh, individuals that we deal with in our special management unit. That's called um, that really struggle with mental health, and, and it's probably quite honestly not the right place for them to be, um, but uh, we're really putting a, a Band-Aid on a bleeding artery. We're trying to keep them safe um, uh, to get them through the, the system. Somebody asked a question about, so again, the, it's, the, it's the what are you doing now thing. So mental health issues now are, are handled how with, with law enforcement? Right, right now we have a, a, a typical 20-ish year old deputy uh, or officer will respond to a home and try to deal with a, a chronic mental health issue uh, from, you know, that's been, individuals been suffering for, for decades. We try, try to provide them with, it's something called crisis intervention training. It's put some, some tools in their toolbox, um, but ultimately what they'll do is uh, they'll determine if the person is a, a threat to themselves. If they are, they contact our mental health um, uh, services. Our, it's called acute care services. And uh, sometimes they'll do a phone consult over the phone. Sometimes, uh, hopefully, most times the the um, the, uh, the ACS will come to the residence and do an assessment. And um, sometimes a safety plan is done. Sometimes an inpatient is done. Um, but the whole idea is that we're, we're trying to, to minimize those, those placements and that, that crisis to begin with. And current climate, that does create stress for the officers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like I said, it's a, you know, a 25 year old, uh, um, officer young. I mean, they're, they're, so we train them, but the, the life experience isn't uh, probably quite the same. And county executive, what are you hearing from your peers? Because like, everybody puts eyes on any city that's mm-hmm. doing a referendum. And when you're talking about public safety or in this one, in this case, the anti-crime referendum, they, they probably have some comments. What are you hearing? Yeah, they, they absolutely do. Everybody tells me they're watching Washington County closely to see what happens here because we're all struggling with uh, making sure our law enforcement and public safety in general has the funding they need. Uh, and, you know, the, the state isn't and hasn't come to the rescue, and, and we don't expect them to. So I think uh, what we're going to see is if it works in Washington County, uh, it'll put additional pressure on the legislature and, and communities all across the state that – you know, we need we need to step up in this area of uh, law enforcement in particular and public safety in general. I've talked to a lot of local leaders who surround the city of Milwaukee and the county of Milwaukee. What happens here impacts your communities as well, correct? Absolutely. And and we're seeing that. We're seeing the, the crime bleeding in from, from other areas. And in fact, uh, over half of our jail inmates are jail bookings, and it's about 4,500 per year, are all out of county residents. So that is very, very, it's a concern of mine. What's your relationship with the leaders in, in public safety in Milwaukee? Do you, do, you, do you speak to them? Do you work with them closely? How, how does that work? Yeah, we, we all, to me, it, it doesn't matter if you wear blue or brown. We're all, <clears throat> we're all in law enforcement, all have the same, same objectives. Um, I, I feel for them and their struggles because uh, um, as the, the county executive mentioned, you know, the Milwaukee Police Department has gotten smaller and uh, crime certainly hasn't. So they're, they're certainly trying to do much, much more with much, much less. And let's wrap it this way, because I want people to know the specifics. And one of the things I said to you guys when you're waiting to come in is I appreciate people that have plans 
but have actual plans to implement these ideas, and that's what this is. So let's lay it out for the folks. It's, it's on the ballots in it, Washington County. It is. November 8th, it's on the ballot. Uh, it's, a, it's a big ask, $3.6 million, uh, which is a 10% increase in property tax collections for the county. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, the good news is because property values are rising, the tax rate, even if this is approved, will drop by $0.09. Cents. Uh, if it fails, it drops by uh, $0.27. Cents. Um, you know, and we hear a lot, well, geez, Josh, it's in the middle of in- inflation and the recession, and, you know, what are you doing? Well, that's literally why it's a, a referendum. And the one thing I would say to the mental health piece in particular, if you look back at the last several recessions, and, of course, the Great Recession is the biggest example, when those recessions happen, that cycle that we just talked about, mental health to substance abuse to crime, they just start to go faster and faster because people lose hope. And government isn't going to provide hope. Uh, the sheriff, the county executive, we can't do that. But to prevent and deter to keep that, stop that cycle from even starting uh, is really what this is about. So I think there couldn't be a better time to have the conversation. Uh, and I, I hope our community has a, has a good discussion. And at the end of the day, Everybody knows all across Southeast Wisconsin and all across Wisconsin that, you know, we're dead serious about law enforcement and, and public safety, and it's about preventing and deterring and being proactive, and with the mental health piece especially, helping people where they're at. Beyond the tax question, are you hearing positive things from the members of your community about this referendum? Either one of you. So I would say as, as soon as we get in front of individuals and explain um, what the ask is and uh, how it really is, we're trying to be as fiscally responsible as we, we can. Um, I, I get a lot of uh, affirmative uh, shaking heads. To, and they, they clearly understand the issues that we're dealing with and at least the solutions that we're trying to provide. And if, if we didn't at least provide those uh, those examples and the, the, the possible solutions to mitigate that, um, I think we failed as leaders. And it's been very positive. I've I've probably done 250 doors already, uh, just because that's how you got to get to people today, right? Um, talking to them, and in 30 to 60 seconds, oh, oh yeah, we we understand we need this, um, but you got to get in front of the folks. We we figure we need uh, 37 to 40 thousand votes in order to make this thing go. And uh, at the end of the day, I hope it's just a really positive conversation amongst our constituents. I want to give you a compliment. Uh, thanks for being great local leaders and, and doing the, the heavy lifting and the hard work. This is, none of this is easy. It never is, especially in, in, uh, in law enforcement and public safety and, and, and certainly the life of a, of a leader now. County or city is, is not that much fun as we know the current political climate. I want to thank you guys for coming in. We are joined in studio by the Waukesha, Waukesha, Washington, I can't talk, County Executive Josh Showman and Sheriff Marty Schulteis. Thanks to both of you, and uh, we'll be watching that uh, come the next election. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having us. We'll take a break, wrap it up after this.